So you've heard from the sculptor himself about the brief that was given to him by the government. He says there are no big changes. This is a manifestation of the original Sarnath pillar. But there are questions, ladies and gentlemen. You know, while we call out the hypocrisy of those who are fulminating over what's going on, we also have to ask why is the op op you know, opposition so triggered over this evolved emblem? You know, is this new India symbolism in the perceptions of some, making some people uncomfortable. They're saying all sorts of things, you know, like toxic masculinity and Hindutva and stuff. Does this emblem symbolize a changed India's, you know, brave new aspirations? That's what the defense would be. Is, are these pronounced features of the Ashoka Lions, uh, you know, a representation of India's much more assertive persona in the new world order? Question number five, are Modi's lions because that's what people are calling it. Modi's lions in an effort to make it his lions and his work, showcasing a sharp, incisive and resurgent India are all questions to really think about. But remember, there are legalities involved. And like Karthi Chidambaram was asking earlier, what about the protocol? Can the center change the national uh, emblem? Now remember, the government has not spoken about this, but there is a sense that they say that there is no change. This is a manifestation of the original. But here are the rules as they are right now. The center has the powers under the state emblem of India, Prohibition of Improper Use Act of 2005, to change parts of it. It can regulate the use of the national emblem, including specifications of design, as the government considers necessary or expedient at any point of time. I want to go across to India today's in-house legal expert, Nalini Sharma, to you know, throw a bit of light on this. Nalini, you know, uh, as usual, Lots of politics, not many facts, which is why it's always good to get someone like you on board, you know, to, to sort of part away, throw away all the, you know, the fiery face-offs and crossfire going on between all parties right now and get down to the basics right now. And the act and the pointers that you've sent us say that the center does have the, uh, you know, uh, provisions to actually do something like this. What is your understanding of this particular pillar and where things stand legally? Well, Chef, keeping all of the politics aside, let's get into the legalities of this controversy that has now broken out. There are basically two statutes or two laws, if you want to use an easier word, that deal with how a national emblem can be used, what are the powers that the central government has, on what buildings it can be displayed, etc., etc. These are, one is, of course, the 2005 Act, the State Emblem of India Act that you just mentioned, and there is another 2007 rules, the State Emblem of India rules, that clarify the provisions regarding the use of the national emblem. Now, according to these statutes, it is very clear that the national emblem itself, which are the four lions, cannot be changed by the central government. However, if you look at Section 6F of the 2005 Act, Section 6F clearly talks about how the central government has the powers to actually change the design of the national emblem to a certain extent. So even though the basic design and the basic idea of the national emblem is to remain the same, the central government does in fact have the powers to change the design of the emblem. Now in Appendix 1 and Appendix 2 of the 2005 Act, there are designs that are provided as part of the schedule on the basis of which this emblem needs to be made. And that's like if I can just read out section 6F to you, it says that the central government has the power to do all such things including specification of design of the national emblem. This does not mean that they have the power to change the emblem itself, but they do have the power to tweak the design. The okay. reason why this act came into being a uh, shift, and it's clearly stated out even in the object and statement of purpose of this act, is that before this act came in, the emblem was regulated only through executive orders or executive yeah. decisions, which had no legal standing, which is why there was a need felt to bring in a law to regulate this entire aspect. And by virtue of the law, the central government in this case seems yes. to have done nothing wrong. They seem to have just tweaked the design according to what uh, they felt was right or what they felt that should have been done. So there is no illegality, there is no lack of process as is being claimed by several opposition parties in the matter. It's become a political controversy but as far as the legal issues stand, the central government is very much empowered to take the changes that they have done so. It doesn't get clearer than that. There's so much of all of this, Nalini, that's so subjective, so... Uh, and we are, of course, a vibrant democracy, so one can totally understand 
uh, you know, the many misgivings and comments that are being made about this, but a legal perspective on where things are at really clears the decks so our viewers can understand that. So, Nalini, thank you very much for that.